Hi again, it's Sheila with Arts Council of Oklahoma City Creative Aging Program. Today we are going to continue doing some watercolor painting. This time we're going to do some butterflies since it's spring, officially spring in Oklahoma. And so we're going to practice um, using a lot of black with our watercolor paints, which we haven't done before. And these butterflies are kind of meant to look a little bit like stained glass. Um, this one has some extra, you know, dragonflies, so if you like dragonflies better, you're welcome to do that instead. Uh, so here's one. Did a few examples to show you. And the small lines is an ultra fine point black sharpie, which we used on our bookmarks. So we're using the paintbrush, the small paintbrush, to do a lot of the details. Maybe a medium sized paintbrush. And then after it's all dry at the end, we can bring out some darks and use the black. And so figure out first if you wanna do a couple small butterflies or if you wanna do one big one. And uh, you know, you can use a full page of watercolor paper or you can cut it down in half. If you want to work a little smaller or if you have limited supplies at home, cutting watercolor paper in half definitely can work so you don't have to go to the store anytime soon. And so um, you're going to need your watercolor paper, pencil, Sharpie, which can be optional, but I'd rather you have it out just in case you do want to add those lines at the end. A couple sizes of watercolor brushes and of course your watercolor paints. And I like to have two cups of water, that way if one gets a little bit muddy, then you can switch and you don't even have to get up. So have a couple water cups and um, a paper towel for blotting. So I already started one, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the other half. So when you're drawing, you want to be light, mainly because it's easier to erase those lines. And if you use light colors for your paint, then your lines may show through, which is fine for this project because it actually looks pretty interesting, but you don't want them to be too dark. Um, so just try to practice drawing light. Hopefully you can see the start of this. So I just wanted to get a basic shape when, you, when you're drawing your butterfly, um, it's good to just start with the center. So I just went in with kind of a circle. And of course you have an eraser and I, I definitely erase a lot. So, you know, don't be afraid to draw and erase and draw and erase and get it exactly the way you like. So start with, you know, maybe a circle right here. And then get your shape, figure out how big you want it and maybe measure it out on your page. And if you want it to look like it's flying or kind of at a diagonal, you can definitely place it differently on your page. So play with the composition. This one is a little higher up at an angle, so it kind of looks like it's mid-air. And you can, this one's gonna be more centered. So it's totally up to you, but um, think about your composition always. And then with the wings, you know, butterflies have all shapes of wings. So, you know, find some pictures online or um, the, under the lesson plans, I will have a lot of images as well as the other watercolor examples. And I'm gonna have some line drawings of butterflies. So you can pick the shape that you'd like to sketch from on the lesson plans um, tab. So just click on that and there'll be additional downloads and you can even print it off if that's easier or you could look at it on your phone um, whatever you prefer all right so now that I have this one you know I started with the center I got one wing all right and then I figured out the midpoint so see how I broke the butterfly up right in the middle so I have a line right here and then I did the lower part of the wing 
Now that I have half of it drawn, it'd be a lot easier for me to do this side because it's symmetrical. Now, obviously, if you don't make it perfect, I mean, if it's mid flying, then the wings aren't gonna be symmetrical. Um, but this is just an easy way to get started, to get one side and then, you know, figure out the other side. So see, right here where I have it about halfway, I'm gonna go ahead and draw that line because both of the sides of the wings are gonna be the same size. And you can also look at the page and figure out, okay, this wing went right up to the top. Okay, so you might wanna do the same thing over here. And so I drew the line here in the middle, so I'm going to connect those two. And then right here, I'm going to kind of go right alongside, and I'll just draw a little dot so I know where to stop. And this is where I'm overlapping and I'm definitely going to erase lines here in a bit. So sometimes you draw over lines and you overlap just to get your shape and then you can figure out, you know, what you want to do and overlap. So everybody has a different style of drawing. I tend to be one straight like one long line a lot of people are more sketchy and that's fine too you can leave those lines they could be part of your design or you can erase them whatever style of drawing you like or you feel most comfortable please do okay so i have my basic outline i did a couple circles in the eyes and then the antennas now at this point I'm going to go ahead and draw some design just to get a few lines on the inside of the wing. And we'll do the dark black at the very end um, because some people actually like the softness of just the watercolor paints and some people like the black Sharpie. So I want that to be optional, so I'm going to do that very last. Um, you could do it right now at this point, but we'll just go ahead and wait. So let's figure out... Let's kind of make it, you know, get some design in there. So um, we'll just draw a few lines. Doesn't really have to be, can just be light. Because these will show through the paint. Well, depending on what color you use. But they should show a little bit. So you can kind of do whatever you want. There's nothing, no right or wrong here. I am doing the same pattern on each side to make it symmetrical. I think that's a little bit easier. So you're just breaking up some shapes. Okay, so there wasn't an exact pattern. I was just, you know, drawing lightly just to give us some interest. And then um, that way it also separates. So if you want to do different colors in between these, later if we want to bring these lines out with the Sharpie, we can. So now that I have just basic shapes, I'm going to start painting. Think about what colors you want to do and um, you know you want these colors to blend well together so I recommend maybe picking if you want warm or cool tones. 
So if you wanna do like this one, these purple and blues, cause they blend well together, okay? And so with your set, or pretty much most sets will be set up this way. So here's your cool colors, your blues and purples. The warms, gonna be oranges and reds. The pinks can kind of go either direction. And so pick some colors that you know will blend well together. Like this one, the dragonflies is shades of greens. And this, all, all the lines I drew, I did different colors. So blues and greens and purples. So that if they do, the water goes into one another, it's gonna make a pretty new color. So this, this will just make it easier. If you have a vision in mind, please feel free to do it. But, um, you know, just be mindful of color blending as always. And that way you have control over how it's gonna look. So with the, uh, get your water. You can start with whichever brush you want, whichever size. At this point, hopefully you're more comfortable with all the brushes and you know what brushes you like or don't like. And I guess I'll do, I'll do purples and pinks maybe. Or, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'll do some purples and pinks and reds. I think would be pretty because I don't have an example like that. And with this, you can kind of do your own thing if you wanna do light or if you wanna start dark. Play with both. Um, the edges might be a little darker. And remember, if it gets too dark, you can always blot it. But because this is more detailed painting, like the bookmarks, you're gonna use not so much water. Otherwise, it's just gonna, all the colors are gonna bleed into each other and it's harder to get the shape that you want. You're gonna end up doing a background, which is a lot more work. So yeah, with this one, definitely use a little less water. So I'm switching to an orange. And you know, once you start this, you might end up changing the direction. So like right now I'm keeping the color separate, but I might end up blending these two together. I'm gonna see how it looks. You can always change the direction if you're not liking the way it's going. No set rules, it's just relaxing and a good fun learning exercise. But take your time and in between colors, just stop and think about if you like the way it's looking. And it's gonna take a while, it doesn't, it doesn't look perfect immediately. So I already kind of wanna blend those colors together. So I'm gonna get more red. And I think I am going to just do more of like a, this one, see how the colors, it's all one color, but then there's more water used and they're kind of, they cut, they blend into each other. And then the black comes later. So I, I think I'm going to do that versus individual colors to make it look like stained glass. So this is where you can decide what you think would look better and be more fun. So you can keep all the you know, shapes that you already drew out. You can do all the colors different, or you can do like, almost like a wash, but where you're blending the color. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this red into the orange. And so now I don't, I don't wanna paint too dark because I wanna show the lines that I drew earlier because that's gonna be easier when we uh, get the pen. 
So I'm going over that orange. Since I already went over, I did the orange on that side, I'm going to go ahead and do it over here, but then I'll blend them the same way. That way it's the same on both sides. Remember to always wash your brush in between. Washing my brush again and going back to the red. So I'm going to drag the, the orange and the red back and forth into each other. Gradual blend. Same with right here, but it's going to dry light enough to where I'll still be able to see my lines. And that way when I, I get my Sharpie and I go over these lines, you'll it'll be a lot easier. Otherwise, you could make new lines. That's fine too. You can even switch if you want to try a darker color. I never use this burgundy. Or, well, I rarely use it. So I'll, I'll do that a little bit. And maybe add some red. I always love blues and purples and greens, like peacock feather colors. So I tend to do a lot of my examples in those colors. These are a little out of my comfort zone. So I, I, I figured I'd try it out with you guys. I don't know why. Oranges and yellows have just never been my colors. So you should look at my closet. It's all jewel tones. So I'm doing this pretty light because I might add different colors. I might bring the red back down in there. So there's that bright red again. I'm just gonna move it around. Let's get more of that bright orange that we used in the beginning. Bring it in the bottom part And the outside edges don't really have to be perfect because we're going to do a lot of dark on the outside. So this will be all covered up. If 
And if you wanted to use a little black paint just to bring shadows, so let's do a little bit of black around the edges and then we'll do the pen also. But it'll look, it'll look good with the mixture of both. This part you do need your small brush. And start with just a little bit of black, not too much. And on parts where there's a lot of water, I'm gonna dab that away because I don't want the black to get in there because it's just gonna spread. I don't want all of it to be black. And honestly, I kinda like the more faded look because it looks more translucent. And when we bring on our lines, it'll look better. So now that I have my colors, And before I bring the black, I'm gonna I'm gonna blend this a little better. So I'm gonna go in and just do some circle motion to make it a little smoother in certain areas. Do that again right up here. So sometimes if it looks streaky, you can just use water and paint with water and circle motions or just play with the direction that you're using your brush to smooth it out. Especially right in here where the, I blended these two together. I just want it to be a little better of a transition. Okay, so now I can do my center black and then get some blacks around the edges. So let's go ahead and start with this center. And this small brush holds so much less water that you have to redip it quite a bit. It's almost good using these tiny brushes. It makes you think about, like, take breaks in between because you have to redip your brush so many times. So it's probably better to make you more patient. So I'm gonna go around the outer part of the swing, just add some dark. And then I'm not gonna put more black on my brush, I'm just gonna drag that into the wing to where it's a gentle fade. Same with right here. I might even re-add some red on top of it in between so that they blend together so it's not so harsh. And a little more orange. Just taking away that line.
Same thing here. So I just added the black around it and I'm using water to fade it. More water. See how you can tell it gets dry really fast. And I'll add a little more red, just like I did on the other side. And this is definitely a process. I, it looks strange for a while. Just like with most artwork, there's always an awkward period And so, like even you can see with this one, it's a little bit awkward, but it's getting there. It just takes a, a lot of time and a lot of work and think about your darks and your lights and then um, whatever you don't like, you can fade or darken the color. And then at the end when we bring our ink work, it'll probably come all together. So now let's go ahead and do the dark down here in this part of the wing. I'm going to I'm going to do less, I think. And I'm just going to start on the edges. So I'm painting at a really weird angle, so I'm going to turn it. I don't do my best work, but I don't have a stand for my camera to where I can get behind me. So I'm always drawing and painting for you guys at this really bizarre angle. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. See how that is so dark. That black really is, I didn't even use that much. Definitely a little goes a long way with the black. So you might want to test it first just to dab some of it away on the paper towel, which I didn't do, but I'm going to make it work for me. I'm going to do the same on the other side and, and then I will fade that in. So. And if you have shaky hands right here, don't get upset about your lines not being smooth because what, that's what the pen is for. It's going to help correct some of the uneven lines. I know a lot of people that we work with do not have perfectly steady hands, which is honestly is more interesting. So just let it work for you and it's okay. So I use more water there, you can tell. That looks better. Okay, so now just paint with your water again. Just like we did at the top. Take this black and fade it and just give, just go into the red a little bit. And this is also where if you want to change your shape a little bit, you can. If you want to make your butterfly a little bigger, you can do that. So I'm going to let this dry for a minute and I'm going to switch back to the example since you've been watching you should be able to see a little bit better um, what I did in these other examples so so like this one started the same I drew a circle here 
I did the body. And then see how I broke up this, the little middle of the body with a line? So I actually drew a line to break the middle of the butterfly. And that way it was symmetrical. So I drew a straight line. And then what I was, I did one wing to get the shape of one wing. And then I drew the other wing. Then, you know, made sure it looked like they were connecting. And then down here kind of did more of a, more of a curvy shape. This one's got a lot more style to it. I wanted this one to really look like stained glass. And then, um, then of course, with the pencil, just broke some shapes up. So I started with this circle and this circle. And so it's easy to start in the center and then that way you will work out. So like right here, I did a line, I did a line so that it was symmetrical and then, you know, crossed it off and just did the, did a design. Whatever I did on this side, I made sure it matched up. And I mainly used, um, a lot of purples and then a little blue painted over the purple. So you can see all of this had an undercoat of the purple. So the same way I did the red and the oranges, I did that with the purples and added a little blue on top of the purple. And then I popped out just a couple pieces, you know, a couple bit of green. So the darker green is what I use there because it's so close to the, the blue. It looks really pretty with the blue and purple. So that's the green I used. And the same thing, I did a heavy, like a lot of dark with the paint on the outside. And then of course the middle part was black. And then right here, I made it more shadowed. So I know that we're not quite there yet, but this is exactly the same technique. And then Whenever you have all the colors the way you like, then you can bring back out your design with your pen. So let's go ahead. This one's getting there, it's getting dry. You wanna make sure it's dry before you use these pens. You don't wanna ruin the pens. And you also don't wanna to push too hard. And these pens, are sometimes a little picky about how if you hold it straight up and down and push hard, it won't even work and people think they're broken. Um, just figure out, you know, the pressure. It likes a little lighter and um, a little bit of an angle. So if these pins that we delivered are new, so they should be working out really well for you if you've kept them in good shape. Meaning don't draw on them when they're still wet. All right, so let's start with these little antennas. And you can paint that or you can draw it, whatever you want. I think it's easier to draw. And you can also add paint even after the pen. So this is where if you didn't have a steady hand, you can fix that. You can go around your lines with the pen. Might be easier for you. And if you wanna change shapes and make things bigger or longer, see, I'm gonna make this wider down here. I feel like there's too much of a point. I'm gonna... Maybe I'll add lines. I didn't have that in the other example, but I think it might look good. Give it a curve. And I can definitely go over that with more black paint later if I want. And then, so let's go on the edge and just add a good line on the edge. Now this is where if you have already painted your butterfly and you love it and you don't want to add any more black, that's totally up to you. This is just a good exercise, how to use pen with watercolor and uh, also how to kind of correct some edges if you want, if you need it. So I'm just lightly going around 
the whole outline. And you can make that line thicker if you want. And this will also make your paint look more like a gradual blend. So it will be darkest on the edge and then lighter. So up here really needs an edge, so. And I'm barely pushing on this pen. So it really works, it gets dark fast. You do not need to push hard. I don't know why we have so many students that feel the need to push really hard on our pencils and pens and they end up getting ruined and uh, it's a little unfortunate, so just try to be careful and not push too hard because these are really, the reason these pins are so good is because the, the tip of them is, so, is an ultra fine point and it's, it looks way better. And if you use one that's a little bit thicker, the black line is pretty much all you see. Whereas we want this to be equally just as interesting as the paint. They should work together for sure. Okay, so I want you to see up close. And now I'm gonna go back in and my, my design that I did, let's bring that back out. And if you can't see it, just make a new design. Which is what I'm doing right here, because I actually wanted a few more lines. I didn't do that many lines, so I'm doing a few more. Then I'm gonna finish my black line, so I'm gonna make that thicker. So I might want to actually make this really dark up here. So I'm going to take this and do it thicker all the way around. So I'm drawing and then I'm going to fill that all the way in. And you can even do, if you want to do certain lines darker, you can. So like right here. Or if you wanted to make the center of one of these lines a little thicker, you can. Or if you want to do lighter, you can go back to your pencil and you can do different lines in there with just the pencil. So see the difference? Okay, so it's coming together. There's a huge difference between this one and the others. It does take a lot of time and you've gotta be thoughtful but just keep going. And if you wanna go back to paint at the end, so say you decide you want more red or anything like that, you can always paint over this pen, that's fine too. I like to usually, now sometimes the paint can fade the pen just a little bit if you use a lot, a lot of water, but 
some of these were actually done with the pen and then the paint was on top of the pen. So like this one. And also actually this one, uh, there's, there's, this is not a ultra fine point Sharpie. So if you don't have this at home and you just want to use a regular ink pen, you can do that too. It just won't be as dark, but it still actually has a really good look. And it might even look more, more natural like veins or kind of like translucent um, in the butterfly. So see the difference? So that's another option. So if you wanted to switch and not use this dark of a pen, you can for sure just use like a Bic or whatever kind of pen you have at home. Um, okay, so let me... Like that one has a lot more straight lines and you can tell that's not as symmetrical. It looks like they're kind of mid-flight. And this was done, I wanna show you the difference. If you do your ink work before you paint, it kind of fades some of the ink. So see how some of these lines are a little faded? That's because it was drawn and then the pen came next, then the paint was done last. So you can also do that if you prefer. Um, it's just a very, very subtle difference. And either is just, you know, is just as fine. So this one definitely had the ink come last. But you can tell there's really heavy dark all along the edge. And then a lot of, uh, a lot more dark in the middle, I mean, in here. So this one has more the lines. Sorry, my phone's, okay. So hopefully you can see that. So I didn't do it as dark in the middle as that one. I painted a little lighter black, so then I did more lines with the pen. But anyways, that is the process. I'm going to finish this one and put pictures up. And uh, I hope you enjoy and just, you know, we plan these projects. Lee and I plan these projects to take you about an hour and a half. And so some people get done in an hour, but really this one I think could take an hour and a half. There, there are, it's a lot more detail than you'd think. you think a butterfly would be super easy. And it's not that it's hard, but it's a lot of build up and you really have to be thoughtful about what you wanna do. And so really think about your color blending. Don't do these one color, that's boring, and it makes it look really flat. So for sure, you know, if you're gonna use purples, use a couple purples and a blue. Try to use three colors, okay? So I would at a minimum do three colors in these and then of course the black. All right. Well, thank you. I will see you next week.